So this is platelet-rich plasma, and it's a special category of treatment that we use for different orthopedic issues. What we do is we spin down your blood, take out the concentrated platelets, and those platelets have special molecules inside of them known as growth factors. In the laboratory, it seems that the growth factors encourage tissues to heal and regenerate. In your knee, in the real world, it seems that it's an effective tool for treating issues like osteoarthritis. How does it work? What's the science behind it? Let's talk about those things inside one of my patient rooms. Here, follow me. So there are two major ways that we use platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, in the office to help treat different orthopedic issues. The first is by injecting it directly into a joint, like a knee or a hip. The second option is injecting it directly into soft tissue, like muscles, ligaments, or tendons. So let me show you a model of how that works and talk about how beneficial uh, we think these treatments can be. So this is a knee, and we're looking at it from the side. And uh, this is our shin bone, uh, this is our kneecap, and this is the end of our thigh bone. Uh, what we see here is a structure called extracellular matrix. It's part of the smooth material that helps joints move over each other without much friction. There is a structure called the capsule that helps separate the inside of the knee from the rest of the body. That Anything inside of here is intraarticular. On the outside, we have our muscles and tendons, and one of the more commonly known st structures is the quadriceps muscle here, and the tendons, the quadriceps tendon and patellar tendon, that are used to help move the knee. If there is something that is consistently aggravating the knee, like a, a past injury, we have three issues that can start to occur inside of the joint. One, we have increased inflammation signal that can be created uh, by the cells inside the knee, including on the capsule. So increased inflammation. That can lead to the breakdown of extracellular ma matrix, uh, making this less smooth. So we can have a loss of extracellular matrix. And the cells that create the extracellular matrix and cells inside the capsule also may be at higher risk for early death. So loss of cells. Past treatments like steroid injections seem to help reduce the amount of inflammation and the uh, uh, amount of extracellular matrix breakdown. PRP seems to modulate the inflammation so it's not as disruptive, encourage an increase in extracellular matrix and reduce the amount of cell death or uh, help stimulate uh, cell growth when possible. So how much better do people tend to do with the PRP treatment for their knee arthritis? Well, if you think about pain and function on a 10-point scale, what we often see is that the range of improvement is between one point to four points on that scale, which is equivalent to some of the best treatments that we have uh, for reducing pain and improving function like steroid injections. But we have to be honest, it isn't perfect. At about six months uh, when individuals get PRP for knee arthritis, about a quarter of them are dissatisfied with the benefits. That is fewer people than the number of people who are dissatisfied after a treatment of steroid injection, one of the more common tools that we use for knee arthritis. Why is there so much variability? Well. Besides the fact that people respond differently to treatments, one of the issues is the way that PRP is processed. There are a large number of different preparation tools uh, with some people doing it by hand and others using different machines that are set to create a certain type of product. With what we create in the office, it has a low amount of what are called white blood cells and a moderate amount of platelets and that amount seems in the research to be a great combination for improving a, a person's pain and function with something like knee arthritis. So how much benefit is there for using PRP directly into soft tissue like muscles, ligaments, and tendons? This area is very controversial and up for lots of debate, but in my practice and in my review of the research, when you use PRP directly into the muscle, it provides no benefit on long-term healing 
or getting you back to sports more quickly. When you use it to inject into a ligament, uh, the, the data seems to be equivocal. Uh, there's more work that needs to be done there. And when you directly inject PRP into a tendon, at best it seems that the benefits that are gained are marginal, hard to really recognize, and when they do occur, it's about three months after the fact. For me, that just doesn't cut it. I prefer, instead of using a more exotic and expensive tool like PRP, encouraging people to work through physical therapy, uh, modifying their training, and trying other tools because time alone may be all that you need for your tendons to recover. Hopefully you found this to be an honest and helpful introduction to PRP. And if you have questions about how PRP can be helpful uh, for your orthopedic issues, please reach out to us. Uh, for any quick questions, uh, uh, use the email address that I'm going to have uh, posted up here uh, to send me uh, a, a question. And if you want to spend more time going over uh, the personalized uh, details about your health history and how it may be helpful for your specific issue, uh, give the phone number a call to set up a consultation in our office. Look forward to seeing you.